Today we're going to talk about productivity apps on the iPad. That's right. Productivity apps. Woo that's now, that's a big category. About, we've talked about office apps in the past, and this is more geared towards getting things done, mm -hmm. doing things on the fly, making sure that you're able to uh, digest information uh, that's uh, the least time consuming, I guess, and the most organizational. First note, I first uh, product I install on anything, whether it's an Android phone, an iPhone, or an iPad, and I'm I was so pleased to see that they did an iPad application very early on, is the great Evernote. Do you use Evernote? Yes, and I've actually I'm excited to kind of see what you, how you use it on your iPad because I've been using it on the web for years. Well, that's the nice thing is that it, it's it's on every platform you could possibly want. What happens is you create notebooks, and these notebooks uh, can contain notes mm -hmm. and everything. I use it for passwords, for serial numbers, things I'm trying to remember, research for this show even. You can tag them. You can. This is really nice for the iPad. You can use GPS to tag them as well. Hey, so, that's us. Yeah. This is, you know why? This is a note that I created here at the Twit Cottage. So, look, this is the Places page. On the, this is the iPad version, which is really nice. This is something that is not on some of the other versions. And uh, you can use it. Windows, uh, every platform, you can use it. It syncs to the, uh, automatically syncs to the uh, web. Now, I have a premium account. Uh, you don't, you can do this. It's apps, the app's free. The, uh, the syncing is free. But if you have the premium account, you get a few extra features, including one of the things I really like, which is it will do some text recognition on photos which makes it much easier to find a photo. So if you take a photo of something, uh, it will do the text recognition, and you can go back and search for the text that was in the photo. You can have some notebooks offline if, you're, if you've got privacy uh, issues. You know, you don't want everything on your, on your, uh, on your uh, iPad, but I have everything on my iPad. So that means even when I can't get online on the iPad, if I'm in an airplane, I can work in Evernote, and when I get back... I can synchronize with my notebook. Synced. Everything is synced on every platform. I mean... And there are so many uh, instances where I'm looking at something online and I go, oh, this is so cool. But later I kind of forget what I wanted to apply it to. Right. It was a website. I could just add a little Evernote. This would be great for iPad today. Uh, make a note to myself to maybe contact somebody I know over at Wired Magazine to talk about it, that kind of thing. So I have hundreds and hundreds of, of notes in here. Yeah, and what you like. You can see some of these notes are pictures. And, and th one of the things I do is I take pictures of wine bottles. If there's, a, if there's a wine I really like, I'll take a picture of it. This Bordeaux that we really liked, I said, was the best yet. It's downloading the picture. You've, it, that you've ever had ever? Well, we were trying. We did a tasting. We went to Costco. Jo John C. Dvorak said, they've got great Bordeaux at Costco. Costco and I bought wine a, tasting. Half a dozen Who of knew? them. Who knew? I know. And Jennifer and I tried them, and this was the one we liked the best. So now I have a picture of it so that I can find it. I mean, how many times do you say, I, that was a great wine, but you don't take the time to write it down? Oh, I, if, I don't, if I don't make a note of it or take a picture, I'll never remember it exactly. again, no matter what I think. So this mentally, is a really good we use. Just don't have, we just don't have the space mentally to remember all the stuff, I'm so it's such a good tool. You can also do audio notes, which is really handy. Uh, you can, it has a recorder built in. Uh, you can uh, take pictures. Um, I, I take pictures of parking spaces, <laughs> so I won't forget where I parked. Oh you can gosh, even use the geotagging to do it. I mean, I can go on and on. Beautiful interface. It's easily the best interface of any Evernote experience. Like, these are the tags. Uh, it's got searching, very powerful, capable searching, and you can save searches. So if there's a search you perform a lot, you see I say I'm always searching for my credit card numbers. I have a credit card search. It will automatically bring me my credit Let's card Let's open notes. that one. Let's not. <laughs> Uh, I think ever here's here's the vehicle identification number of my Mustang because I can never remember that so I took a picture of it. Why do you need that? Well, sometimes people, you know, when you fill out insurance forms and right. things like that. Yeah, um, getting out of jail. I was at, at people's houses. Jennifer says, "Hey, that's a really uh, good looking bush. What is that plant? I don't know. I take a picture of it using my iPhone mm -hmm. or my Droid. It'll work with anything that Evernote's on." And now it's in my database. I don't know. I don't even have to know what I took this picture with. And I can find the name of the plant and I can search for it later. So I, I, look, it's free. It's free. Why not have it? Evernote. So that's my pick for number one. Actually, it was yours. But it's okay. I, I stole it. Yeah, that's all right. I think uh, one of the nice things about Evernote is not everybody uses it, but the people who do, everyone says, I can't live without it. Now that I have Evernote, I mean, the user experience definitely speaks for itself. There are other Notepad apps on the uh, on the iPad, but this is my favorite. Absolutely. Uh, next uh, part of our productivity theme, Instapaper. Now, many folks have heard of Instapaper, but if you haven't, I guarantee you, 
I'm about to change your life. So what do you, how do you use Instapaper? Cause so what I do is, you know how you were talking about when you're doing research for one of these shows? Mm -hmm. It's like I have the same problem where I'm looking at a million sites um, on a regular basis, and I need to take a note, and I don't necessarily know what to do with it. I just want to know that I want to read it later. Yeah. So all I do is... is um, Let's say here, let me go to Safari first. So I'll show you how I do something like this. You could have, and by the so way, this works this with a desktop computer too. You could have an Instapaper it bookmark anywhere. It absolutely does. In fact, Instapaper has been around on the desktop for quite a while. In fact, uh, the programmer of Tumblr is the guy who made it. Oh, I didn't Mark know that. Yeah, You're yeah. kidding. Yeah, he's, he's pretty smart. Anyway, so I've got this little Instapaper bookmark lit up at the top here. So if I wanted to save this page, this could be any web page, anything. I just hit the little link and it lets me know, saved, up in the left-hand corner. Our wireless might be a little bit slow right now. But anyway, so... And, and now this, you can read it later. For instance, I was... Uh, and it could be about anything. I was doing research on the McChrystal incident, so I just saved a bunch of columns, and now I can read them at any time. You you have... What do you... Help for autism? You have oh, it's Photopedia? Also, well, it's I Help for Autism because it was a neat uh, story about that. kids oh. who are taking to iPads. Oh, and I thought neat. to myself, I want to do something on our show. I don't know what yet, so I'm just going to save it. For Great later. for research. Now, Instapaper has a free version, but the uh, the full version is four ninety nine. And the reason that it's great is because it gives you a bunch of different settings. For example, you can change the look. You know, you can have a dark interface. You can have rotation on. You can choose um, between scrolling or pagination for your articles. You can send. You can share uh, with your Tumblr or Twitter accounts. You can add. Um, articles to a variety of different places. So let's say I go into, well, this is actually, that was just my little, uh, let's go into this autism story because we were talking about before. So I read it and I'm really interested in it. Now this is it. a good point is that they're scraping the page. So it really makes it look like an article. You don't get a lot of the extra junk that you'd see on a exactly. web Exactly. And that's the, the whole point of Instapaper is it's supposed to be a great tool for when you need to read stuff later, not only if you're online, but let's say you're offline, all you need to do is just load it up once then you can be underground on a subway and you're reading all your stuff because it's already been saved. So let's say I love this article. I think it's really amazing. And by the way, I can change a bunch of different text options. I can make it look a lot of different ways. If I send it, my sharing options are really great. I can email the link. I can post a Tumblr. I can send a Tweety or Twitter or Twitter. You know, it's, it's making use of a lot of the best iPad apps out there. And then if I want to change to pagination, instead of scrolling, I just hit the bottom, and it, it kind of has does a it, Kindle feel On to the it. Uh, iPhone, it does tilt scrolling. Does it do tilt scrolling on the uh, iPad? Sure does, and you can turn that on and off. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I know. So it'll scroll when you tilt it. I don't know. That may be a given. You can also star things for people who are, who are they're used to sort of the Gmail way of organization or archive. That's all built in as well. You also have the ability to create folders so that you can organize your stuff. I mean, if you're saving enough articles... Then saving alone, I haven't actually made too good a use of folders, but that's really my next step because I'm starting to save so many things that if I knew I want to save stuff for iPad, I want to save stuff for green tech, I want to save stuff for TNT, then that would you just help me that. be organized even more. So Instapaper, couldn't recommend it more. Four ninety nine on the, the uh, iTunes uh, app store. There is another program very similar called Read It Later. Some people prefer it. I don't see much difference between the two. I've been an Instapaper user for years. Free to set up an account. There is an Instapaper Pro account, or you can, but you do need to buy the uh, the app. Uh, our four, our third app in our productivity category, and, and again, I'll emphasize productivity could be a lot of things. So we just kind of picked three things that we found really useful and handy. This is called Elements. It's a text editor. Now I know a lot of you spent the ten dollars on pages and bought pages, the word processor. But really, uh, on the iPad, word processing probably is overkill. A text editor is probably all you need. And I think this is a really simple, nice text editor with one really nice feature. After you create your files, it automatically saves it to Dropbox. Ooh, Now, every, cool. everybody may not know what Dropbox is, but, it, but Dropbox is kind of the single most useful productivity tool out there. It is a website... You, uh, you can get two gigabytes for free. I think I have a 50 or 60 gigabyte Dropbox uh, account because we store so much stuff there. But what happens is Elements creates an Elements folder on Dropbox where anything that you create on the iPad is automatically saved and can be accessed anywhere else you access Dropbox. Now, Dropbox has clients for Windows and Mac. You could also do it through the web page. So the same document that is on my iPad is on my desktop. Oh, that's great. And if you're already in Dropbox all, all the time Which anyway, then everything's just in a folder. Yep. 
So it's just super helpful. It's a, it is, you know, again, it's for somebody who wants to, who uses Dropbox or has heard about Dropbox and wants to use it. Two gigs free, which is plenty for plain text files. And it really solves that problem, which I think is still a big problem of getting files into and out of the Macintosh. You don't have to do any exporting. You don't have to do anything. You just edit it. Now, of course, as you would expect, it also has the capability of emailing your, uh, emailing your, um, your file somewhere. You don't have, you know, you're not stuck with just using Dropbox. You can export it. Uh, there are a lot of other features. Uh, there's a scratch pad on it, um, which is a great place to kind of put stuff for later use. Uh, you have font control. Not a huge selection of fonts, but but pretty good. I don't know. That's plenty. <laughs> That's more than That's enough. That's plenty. I know some people go font crazy, but I only need like five. Type sizes from 8 point to 24 point. Uh, you do have colored text, which gives you some, some you know, it's, look, it's not. Yeah, you've, you can customize it to, to a point. Yeah, it's you not. You can choose violet text, for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah, it's not. A, it's not <laughs> you can choose black text on a black background if you really want to go crazy. There is a spell checker. It does support text expander for those of you who use text expander. And that would be another kind of freebie tip uh, on the iPad and the iPhone and on the Mac, certainly. Text expander is great. Uh, it's simple, uh, not a complicated program, not not super elaborate, but also not super expensive. Four ninety nine. It's called Elements Dropbox powered text editor from Second Gear. Just another handy productivity tool for getting data, uh, text primarily into and out of your iPad. So those were our three favorite productivity apps for the week. We always want to hear your suggestions, and we've loved the ones that you've had so far. In fact, we decided to do productivity apps because we've gotten so many suggestions of people saying, loved the Office apps, but more productivity apps. You know, how do I, how do I keep organized? How do I get things done? So if you have ideas, um, or, well, if you want to watch our productivity apps again, or you want to watch our Office apps, that was episode three, you can visit us at twit.tv slash IPT. And if you have a theme idea of your own, you can let us know at iPad today at twit.tv.